Greetings, Marshard. Welcome to episode 254 of my modded Factoria playthrough. In this episode, we are going to build the iron pellet and ingot setup. Enjoy. Okay, we've got our input fuels here. And the rest of the things that we need to get are fairly easy, that they're either nearby or won't take too much effort. We've kind of made all those calculations, so from here we can start building each individual setup here and worry about anything they might need like the limestone after we've got it built. So we might as well start at the beginning, start with iron, that we're going to have four belts of input instead of three, and we're going to have eight belts of output instead of four. So this is going to be fairly significant in size. It's not as much as it sounds like, because you see like what happens with iron is that half of it's going to go to making steel and other things, and the other half is just making iron. So it's not quite as complicated as copper will be, which will have all these different belts going all over the place. So we're definitely going to want to uh, kind of rebuild this section here. We kind of need to decide where we want everything to begin. And we're going to have our six belts coming through here. And they probably will fit up here, although we might want to scoot these up a little bit to add more space because you see there's some zigzagging going on there. So if there's no space, above here for that, that might be kind of an issue. So we'll probably want to move that a bit. But uh, we probably want to leave some space in here for uh, other methods. Because some of these methods use just like, for example, three stages, like with iron. And then like copper gets four. And then like manganese gets five. Different methods have different numbers of uh, stages that they need. So we probably don't want to completely mash this in here but also the position of these belts are probably going to change a little bit. So as this moves up here, we're gonna to need to decide where we want the bus to start. But probably the good news is that these setups are going to be a lot smaller. So I think we calculated that at some point, might have uh, already removed it here, but um, because of our speed modules and faster machines, we don't need to take anywhere near this much space to do this stuff. So it's going to be much smaller. If we have to move these tracks, then so be it, but I don't think it'll come to that. But just have to keep in mind that we might be doing some squishing here. But like with the coke, we're probably going to have to rebuild a lot of this. Just depends on the numbers here. Because we're going to have four belts going in and two belts going out, which is actually kind of how this is set up already, which is kind of nice. And then it goes from two to three. And then out of here is where we get our eight. But I suppose another question here is do we want to do direct insertion? Because we absolutely could. Setups tend to be wider when you do them that way. But they also tend to be simpler. Well, width isn't too much of an issue right now. I can't really bump up to here. But we probably have another 40% of this space left over. But we are going to add in some new processing types of our titanium, cobalt, gold, and steel. So it'd fit, but I don't know if we really want to be making these setups wider than they are now. So for now, I think I will avoid the direct insertion, especially because the orientation of these machines is exactly what we would want. Because one of the problems of rebuilding this setup is that the number of belts changed. So despite it being very visually similar, that we kind of had to move everything around just because of the different numbers of belts. But over here, it's uh, even though three belts are going into this warehouse, it's actually being split into four. And then it's uh, four to two, which is already what we'd want. So since this orientation is correct, and this one will be as well, I kind of don't want to rebuild it too much. But we'll need some machines, because while we're building it, we don't want to be waiting on robots to get down there. And I don't think we have any pellet presses yet on our bus, so we probably should make some of those. So let's grab something, maybe like this one, and just plop it right there. Set it to 50. I think that having uh, 50 of any given item is probably as many as we would ever need because uh, the robots would just start building more by the time we would actually need them. So I kind of set all the numbers down to 50 for the end product we need and like 10 for the intermediates. So we can switch over to the pellet press. I'm pretty sure we're doing like chemical plants and all that other stuff. 
But I guess we'll find out in a second when we go looking for them. But we can just copy those over there. Let the robots get started. In the meantime, we can grab other stuff we need. Like some blast furnaces. The ore processors. Then we just need to wait on these. Luckily, they get made pretty quick. Oh yeah, the filter on here needs to be changed as well. Wouldn't want to forget that. Okay, we've got what we need. Let's see, it would help to push these belts down so we at least know how much space they would all take. So for now, since we're probably going to be redoing some of this stuff, I'll just take out all of the, uh, the cutouts here. So that way we know the exact position of this. So there's where the resources would come in. And I suppose we can save some space here if the zigzag happened down here instead and just went straight in. And it seems like there would be space for most of it to happen down here. So I just want to try to minimize the amount of things we're moving here. So we would need 20 machines, which would basically just be to there. Although because of our new power poles, the spacing of everything would change a bit, but since they're inserting on both sides of a belt, it should be pretty easy to just modify. And we probably want to disconnect this so resources stop getting sent through. Let's see, nowhere to put the resources. Probably because the storage warehouse is currently closed. So we'll do that instead so they have somewhere to go. And what kind of inserters we're going to need. Seems like a yellow would be fine going in and a red to go out. Well, pretty much exactly, but I don't know if we want to have them be exactly the minimum inserter that they need to be. So we'll increase them slightly. So that's our 12. So we do our 16 and our 20. Then we need to do the 40 pellet presses, which is actually kind of convenient for this shape because it uh, increases the number of resources that need to go out. So we hit the iron pellets there. So basically that means we have one input belt and then two output belts again. And the speeds this time are a lot smaller. So we can just have a yellow going in and the regular going out, but they need to alternate between near and far. So we need a total of six of them in a row to get the alternating inserters correct. So that's our 12. So we do another set to get our 24. And all of this stuff is now in the way. We probably are going to need to change some of the spacing here because right now there's only like one belt going through there, but we're going to need two resources. I suppose we can just jam another belt in there, but it feels kind of bad mashing everything super close together like that. Fortunately, the robots are choosing here to put even things that shouldn't go in there, but oh well. So let's add another one of these on the end. So what do we got here? 36, so we need one more row. We'll grab that one. Let's see, let's pick up all of the copper here. Because I kind of want to increase the amount of uh, space between these setups. It doesn't have to be a lot, but I'm thinking having like three spaces in between ought to work pretty well. And there is a huge pile up right here. I guess they need more charge boards. Of course, all of this is going to be, like, shortly rebuilt, but... Let's just help the construction. So I was wondering why it was kind of taking so long for robots to get here. That could explain it. And I just want to pick all these up. Just to get the robots to change their mind about where they park. There we go. Okay, we have our 40. And all of that only goes down into a couple of blast furnaces. <laughs> and this very well might be a situation of being inserter limited, but we'll have to see. So we'll get this set up because we would have these three inputs and one output. So we would need to get 12 pellets in. We gotta put the belt there to get the right numbers. So two would work for the pellets, and probably a red inserter 
We work for the fuel and the limestone. And then the 36 ingots we have to get out of here. And it's technically a little bit less because I'm calculating this on a per machine basis, but we don't quite need that number. But basically we would need to have eight machines because each one's going to get its own belt. But it probably helps for throughput reasons just to give it enough inserters for the full machine's output as opposed to the partial machine's output. And that'll just have a little buffer on top to make sure that the inserters can run at full speed. So, if we need to get 36 out of these, it means we would need 5 inserters. But because that's a weird number and they're inserting onto one belt, we kind of need to have 6 of them. Which is kind of annoying. So maybe something like that going up. And because of the input requirements, it can share a belt with the other side there, so we can move that. Maybe do something like this for those other two inputs. We can work out exactly which ones they are in a second. But something like this, I think. Where they have output, output. Although it might be a little cleaner. Annoyingly so, but it might be a little cleaner if uh, they swung around up top here. Because then none of that would have to be down there. Which would allow the other inputs to come in through the bottom. And they would basically be like two reds coming through here. But we would need to have eight of these. Which would be annoyingly wide, but I don't think there's really much way around that. Unless the belts kind of came in through the middle. Kind of like this, but if that's the case, then we probably wouldn't want to have those belts right there. So it'd be something like that with the belts going in. Kind of like that, but then we still need to get the resources in. But I suppose they can kind of be slung down the side, like from over here. Something like this, and more things are getting in the way. So we'll just keep picking them up. And plop another one right there. Because I'm thinking the input resources would come in through here. Though we still need to make that limestone from somewhere. Probably like maybe over here or something. So we'll have to find a place for that belt to go. But the idea is the resources can come in here and actually I was thinking I can kind of put them in there. And we need to charge up. But we can also just kind of use the space between the setups. That should work pretty well too. Something like that to split the resources off. And they would go in. And we would need a throughput of six in total. And I think one stack inserter would work for each. And let's see, can it jump this whole gap? Ooh, just barely. But it can. And that would get the resources in there. Then it would need to do the same right here. Probably need to move all of this out of the way. Robots coming through. Trash in that chest. <laughs> then we would have our eight belts. Uh-oh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what in the world is going on here? Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> a biter exploded into many orbs, it seems. Well, <laughs> we're gonna have to go down there and fix that. Looks like they got a spitter in pretty close proximity to here, but uh, that's a lot of orbs in a very small space. Like here, it kind of makes sense because there's like a spawner right there. But here, what in the world happened? Did it just run out of space to put them? <laughs> uh, okay, we'll have to go down there and fix that. We'll let the robots work here. So well, they're definitely attacking there. Man, yeah, I think there's just uh, a lot of biters in the small space here. Woo! Wow, that sound effect was changed. Wow. Sorry if that was a little loud. Sounds loud to me. 
It's also pretty effective. <laughs> See if the SMG is the same. It is. <laughs> wow, that was a little loud. <laughs> Wait, out of ammo? Well, I guess it's out of ammo just because it like spilled on the belt. Wow. That might explain what was going on there. And it doesn't look like the uh, orb catchers, the gathering turrets are working correctly here. But, uh, hmm, <laughs> it's a lot of junk to clean up. Yeah, it's really been spilling over here. So this has been going on for quite some time. Guess just pick up on the end until <laughs> the belt is clean. The bots are trying to help with the orbs. I'll try replacing the uh, gallery turrets again and see if that fixes it. For some reason they just uh, stop working after a while. It's kind of weird. Or they work until they don't. This might be a good opportunity to uh, start building some artillery to <laughs> destroy all these nests, at least the ones that are close to the wall. Because that seems to be a problem, where they expand right up to the wall and then uh, we're just kind of constantly shooting at them. Because they're close enough to the pollution cloud. So although we're in the middle of doing something else, that might be something worth doing, but I kind of want to at least finish with iron first, so we can see how it works. Okay, I think we're finally at the end of this uh, pollution of the ammo belt. Let's pick up the gathering turrets here, put them back down, so they can start cleaning everything up again. It's definitely a, a cool item, I just wish it worked more reliably. So that's what it's supposed to do. Zap all the orbs. Uh-oh, something similar is kind of happening up here, too. Although it quite hasn't overloaded to the same extent, but... It's still kind of happening where... The uh, biters are attacking and orbs are getting overloaded. Let's see what we can accomplish here. Just trying to push the wall back a little bit here. The wall of, uh, biters. And uh, I don't have any fish with me, so I probably should be quite careful what I'm doing here. This armor isn't for fighting biters. It doesn't have any shields or anything on it. There's just so many orbs everywhere. Look at that. Can't even pick them up anymore. Well, that should have at least that wall fixed. Let's open up the storage warehouse here so stuff has somewhere to go again. See, that's kind of close. It's a very interesting application of, like, landfill right there. I think we're definitely going to need to try to clear some of this out.
I think that's the most we can reach from here, <laughs> safely. So how's the other wall doing? It's managing. It's kind of having the same problem. Move the biter nest encroaching on the wall. But it seems like it's basically holding up. Of course, it's putting it in the wrong spot here, as it likes to do. Okay, the iron's getting hooked up here. Might be cleaner if this was just spaced away a little bit. Like right there, so I guess we're going to get more space in here after all. Which is a little worrisome about uh, expansion here, but eh. I mean, this could be moved if it needs to, and certainly coal processing could be moved. It's kind of annoying that we just rebuilt it, but could also uh, expand to the right here. It'd be a little messy. And we'll just have to see how it works, because uh, at this point we have a high enough throughput where we kind of are starting to have to do kind of crazy stuff like this in order to get all the belts to fit. All right, well, when everything comes out, it'll need to go into a warehouse. We can try to keep it centered still. Something that has enough space to get the throughput we're going to need. Because we have eight belts going in and then eight belts going out, which is many of the squares on this thing. Because it would basically be those, and then we would need half of them to go to the side, and the other half would go up. Basically like this, it just so happened to be lined up. See, these could be made slightly simpler. And that last one can go in there. So those belts would go off to the side. See, I think the inserters are inverted here, because we need to have a stack inserter on the input, which would be right here. And a long handed for the output. Okay, well, since it lined up, I guess I'll just connect that again. But this will be a logic priority warehouse, so we need to set it to something. Uh, a thousand worked before, so it'll probably work here as well. So if less than a thousand, this turns on. And thus they're all on. And then it'll need to have priority for the various outputs, but we can set that up later. I won't bother connecting that because it's probably just going to move in a bit. Okay, well we're also going to need to have the limestone, which is a fairly straightforward setup. Just need a few washing plants here. And we need to pick a spot to do this processing. I mean, it would technically fit right here. It's probably not the ideal place to put it, because other setups couldn't do that. But the space exists, and it's essentially a linear setup. I don't like squishing things in that tight, though. Doing it over here kind of makes some sense. Probably going to need a ton of landfill, though. Really kind of want to have a teleporter warp point over here. So while we're flying, let's make another one. We need high capacity accumulators. It will take 1,000 batteries <laughs> to make it. And there we go. The construction process will start. <laughs> It'll take a while to get there. Before we start grabbing landfill from our stone, let's grab it from the mud generator up here. So we had a teleporter pad, we can just go right down there, but instead, the closest place we have is down here, which... Eh, it's reasonably close, but still takes some flying to get there. Let's see, let's use this space here. Okay, something like this ought to be enough. Let's see, can robots reach here? Kinda. There we go, that'll make them work. Placing concrete. <laughs> it's always a little messy doing it that way, but... Well, the road is right here, so we probably don't want to go up too high with this. But maybe having the belt here, but it could also just go kind of up this way as well. Let's see, will it jump the big one? Nope. But it will go through here. Then we need to go through the various steps. First, the three waters. Water one, water two, water three. 
And then we have another eight of them. Right here, mixing up for the limestone. Although we can't quite mash them that close together. Gotta have a space in here. We can kind of space them out. Then have the waters in there. Jumping across. Let's see, this whole thing is going to make 30 limestone a second. But we only need 20 for this. Is that because something else needs limestone? It does. It's lead. So actually, if that's the case, we probably want it to kind of come down here somewhere. Like there. So it probably makes sense to use this like we were before. So this whole setup is going to output mostly limestone, but it's also going to make a little bit of mud too. That one outputs very little mud, so... Just a couple of inserters. Each machine is about four, which is a red inserter. I'll just give it red belts to help it max out. I guess we'll just keep it lined up right here then. We need a supply depot here. Oh wow, are we out of resources here? I guess so. Yeah, they're getting here. Wow, without uh, the circuits we can't build much of anything. Seems like a bunch of robots got stuck right here. I guess they're trying to get the orbs over there, but they're like perpetually stuck in the middle of the ocean. Well, with some landfill, I can try to do something about that. Okay, mud has to be greater than 600 to turn that on. Let's start making our limestone. Well, for as much as we have belts for it seems pretty good. Let's see what we can do about all these robots getting stuck. Let's see, they're making it to... I guess it depends on exactly where they're charging, but uh, right about here. So let's put a charge point right there. So now hopefully they won't get so stuck, but uh, they're not charging, but I guess it's because the logistic zone is too far away. Let's see, still no charging. So I guess we gotta connect this a little bit too. There they go. Finally charging. So let's see how far they get, or are they just going to turn around again? Kinda don't care if they run out of power, just as long as they're going in the direction they need to. They don't turn around. Just don't want robots getting stuck is all. And it looks like they do make it. So this giant line of bots is no longer stuck. Might as well put another charge point down here somewhere. We've got the limestone. And we have the coke. So as far as the amount, let's just use a sorting warehouse for this just to make sure it all gets in there. Although that's the wrong resource. There it is. We'll do that sorting warehouse. Limited to one. And none of this is in a very good spot. But there we go. We should be ready to test this now. Hopefully it all gets delivered to the right place. Seems like it. Okay. Well, we're at the big moment here of seeing how this works, so... Let's unhook everything and try it in bursts. So that one is just a sorting warehouse, which is correct. We need to get an extra belt, so we have four belts of input. So we want to get that set up correctly. And we've got some processed iron. We can kind of put where it needs to go, but... 
We need belt number four. I guess it would make the most sense to come here for the purposes of this warehouse. But then, of course, it becomes a little misaligned with this one. What can you do? Well, I can tell you what we can do. <laughs> we can try to move it. It's like, well, if I move it, though, then all of these are going to get misaligned, so... Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just going to have to do the shimmy. And we can put a lot of this processed iron in here. We don't need to have robots do this. Because this is the only time we're going to have processed iron in our inventory. Since it's not going on a bus or anything, we are unlikely to be moving this stuff around. Although the ingots, on the other hand, we will have a bunch of, but we kind of want to test to see how this works, so... For now, we'll let it happen. But in goes processed, and that's kind of a cool little look. The pellets, they're very geometric and aligned. <laughs> they look very clean. I approve. But we have four belts of output, but it only uh, needs to be 80. So it doesn't quite need that many belts. But since it's already positioned in this shape and that works well, uh, we have it in that way. Okay, well, let's throw the pellets in then. And see if we get some ingots. This should be eight full belts. You know, with the occasional hiccup from inserters not having uh, perfect throughput. But I don't know, that looks pretty close to being uh, maxed out. And of course, we hit the limit, so now it's just uh, pulsing it as we would expect it to. But uh, for the three and a half seconds that that ran, that looked pretty good. <laughs> Well, I guess if our output is eight belts, then it wouldn't take very long for it to fill up. Okay. Uh, these ingots would have a place to go. And it probably should be right here, because this is where it makes the most sense for them to go. So, let's make the logistics version of it. So we can put it there and put the filter... To make sure that the ingots get in there. And I guess it's time for more filters here. <laughs> Let's make one for iron. And one for copper for now. Because we want none of either. Although copper doesn't have anywhere to go, so I probably shouldn't be throwing that in there, but oh well. The iron does. So yeah, seems good for as long as it ran, which wasn't much. We have other setups we need to do, but we should probably be working on making some cannon ammo instead. But that'll have to wait till the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later.